thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's such a privilege to be able to share God's word. It is a real passion of mine. And before I start, Marcus and Adele from Cornerstone and everybody that knows so many of you send their love and their regards. And I want to say to this leadership, thank you for giving Henny and I the most incredible welcome. We have been so spoiled. Um, I'm not going to go down that road because... I do need to get into the word. And Crunch, thank you for opening the door for me to share this morning. Um, yes, I said Crunch. My man's name is Crunch. I'm using a scripture verse for my in introduction. And I want to give you all a warning because it is out of context. But I loved what Jesus was saying here. And for nearly a year, I've been walking around with a scripture verse. I think Marcus is tired of me reciting it <laughs> at meetings, but it has caught hold of my heart. This verse comes from Matthew 22, verse 29. And here Jesus is addressing the Sadducees and the Pharisees for their religious spirit. And I think there are areas in all of our lives that need the light, the life, the truth, and the power of God. Amen. Matthew twenty-two twenty-nine. So just that you know, because I've been dying to say this, I've entitled my message, You Are Wrong. <laughs> you are wrong. Matthew 22, verse 29. But Jesus answered them, You are wrong. Because you know neither the Scriptures nor the power of God. You know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. What would my life look like if I knew his word and I knew his power? If I really grabbed hold of that, what would my life look like? What would the church look like? In this portion... The Sadducees and the Pharisees are not happy with what Jesus is saying. So now they want to challenge him, and they want to challenge him on the resurrection because they don't believe that. They didn't believe that there's a resurrection. And Jesus was showing them out of the books of Moses. Jesus is telling them from verse 32, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. I am. I am already tells us that God is with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That relationship is alive. There is a resurrection. God is in relationship with them. They were wanting to trap Jesus theologically. These men were resisting God's word and his spirit. And I find sometimes in my walk, I get caught up in people's ideas, people's opinions, Instead of building according to his word and according to his spirit. Jesus wanted to make the point with them that not knowing the scriptures, not knowing the power of God, 
leads to error. Yo. It leads to error. I begin to live from my natural realm. I wrote here, being normally natural. Ew. It reminds me of Revelation where it says, speak, Jesus speaks about the church and lukewarmness. I will spit you out of my mouth. Ew. Being normally natural. In this story, Jesus is more concerned about the re religious spirit than what he is concerned about the drunkard, the prostitute, because he can bring them his truth and they'll fall down and receive. But the religious spirit, no. I'm good, I'm right, I'm moving along strong. But the religious are filled with their own self-righteousness. Am I prepared to sit and look? To really put my life under the magnifying glass, that light of Jesus, And to see, where are my adjustments? Why is his word and his power necessary in this world? To be witnesses, to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. The proclamation of the gospel has to be in word and in deed. And I can only do the deed with the power of Holy Spirit. I need both. This is how the gospel of the kingdom works. It is amazing. If you look at God's word and how prophetically we are walking into what was spoken from Genesis 1 to now, it is unbelievable. I cannot understand how people cannot receive this Jesus who questioned this word. Man cannot orchestrate this. In Mark 16, 20, it says, And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. They went out. And what happened when they went out and preached Jesus? Because they preached it everywhere. While they preached, the Lord worked with them. Spirit and word. We cannot separate God's word from what we have to do, from his power. Scripture and power work hand in hand. So my question to you this morning is, what kind of person can God use? Who will be part of God's plan to be his witnesses to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom? We've heard this morning about what's happening in the world. What's happening here in New Zealand? Many things that can stir us up, make us fearful. Make us wonder, where are you, Lord? It can do that. In 2019, the st statistics estimated that 95% of all Christians have never won a soul to Christ. 95%. Eighty percent of all Christians do not consistently witness for Christ. Less than two percent are involved in the ministry of evangelism. 
71% do not give towards the financing of the Great Commission. And these figures are staggering. And we can get caught up in, in it. But I believe it's useful to really consider it. 95% have not led somebody to Jesus. The church is made up of disciples making disciples. That's what we do. When I speak to people about marriage, I always tell them, my marriage with Henny, our relationship is one of discipling. We disciple each other. That's what our marriage is all about. The church exists for the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ to maturity, to teach and preach the word of God, to unify people, to be the hothouse of God's kingdom being lived out, and to see Jesus reflected to the world. Tyron made this statement. He said, the church is not a waiting room for heaven. The kingdom is about impact. Too many people have come to accept the church is the main evangel the evangelistic tool in the world. That's not the purpose of the church. The church is for us to come and get together and we have our spun praiki. What is that, Henny? Hey, team talk. Team talk. You know, like on the rugby field, they get into their huddle and they have their team talk. That is the picture I have of the church. This is where we come together. We build each other up. We encourage each other. We exhort each other and we send each other out. That is the work of the church. And yes, the church does play a role to see that people hear the gospel. But let's not allow that to tear away my responsibility of me speaking about the one that fills my heart. So I want to focus on three qualities that people need to be witnesses and to demonstrate the kingdom has come. People who know Jesus, people who are Holy Spirit empowered, people who have an expectation to be used, knowing Jesus. It's all about him. And this is the, the, the one subject where I find I get overwhelmed and I lose myself because I just have to say his name. And I cannot control my heart. In John 3.31, he says, He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He is above all. Amen. Come on. These are the words of John the Baptist. In one of Charles Spurgeon's sermons, he said the following, and I loved what he said. I've read it so many times. A sermon without Christ as its beginning middle and end is a mistake in conception. It's a mistake in conception and a crime in execution. I cannot preach if Jesus is not there. 
If he is not the beginning, the middle, and the end, I have nothing to share with you this morning. Yes, and I mean by Christ, not merely his example and the ethical precepts of his teaching, but his atoning blood, his wondrous satisfaction made for human sin and the grand doctrine of believe and live. Without Christ in the doctrine, you shall do nothing. If you have left out Christ, there is no manna from heaven, no water from the rock, no refuge from the storm, no healing for the sick, no life for the dead. If you leave out Christ, you have left the sun out of the day and the moon out of the night. You have left the waters out of the sea and floods out of the river. You have left the harvest out of the year, the soul out of my body. You have left joy out of heaven. You have robbed all of its all. A Christless sermon is a brook without water a cloud without rain, a well that mocks a traveler, a tree twice dead, a night without a star. It were a realm of death, a place of mourning for angels and laughter for devils. We must preach Jesus. At this point, I could close Because there is so much. He is above all. Is he the consuming fire of your life, of your heart? Is he the one that still brings you down to your knees? This is the Jesus. There is an incredible power when our eyes see him. Behold the Lamb. It's only in His presence. It's only in the stillness of my morning that I can see Him. I can hear Him and I can feel Him. There is never a time when Jesus will not be relevant. Never. With everything that's happening that we've heard this morning, he's relevant. I want to urge you, make everything, everything about Jesus. The disciples were sent out with Jesus as their message. Even in his name, even in his name, have we lost the realization of the power of his name, the name of Jesus, the name above all names, the name that gives life, that heals, that sets free. His name means Yeshua, it is salvation, Savior. I have stuff every day that I need to be saved from. He is my answer, he is my Savior, my prophet, my priest, and my king. And if he is my king, is he my Lord? Or is he only my Savior so that I can get to heaven? Or is he my Lord? that I serve him. He cannot only be our savior. The knee bows to the Lord. In Luke 24, 46 to 48, Jesus tells us clearly who we are. 
and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. You might sit there and say, well, those, that was the disciples. I didn't witness that. If you're saved, I want to remind you that you have. I'm a witness of his great love. I'm a witness of the price he paid for me. I am a witness of the forgiveness of my sin. And because of this witness of Jesus in my life, John 7 verse 38 grabs hold of me and rivers of living water flow. Once Jesus has grabbed hold of me and he is the lover of my soul, rivers will flow. The second point is Holy Spirit empowers us to bear witness, to be witnesses in the world. And I'm running out of time, so I'm going to cut this short. In Acts 1 verse 8, it says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. I want to focus on the word be, because we all want to do witnessing, and doing witnessing is such a hindrance. You see, when Jesus is flowing through me, when his power, when his love, when the man possesses me, then I become a witness. But what's happened is it's become something we do instead of something we are being. Um, so, what's the difference? Like I said, being, I'm overcome by Jesus, but the doing, doing wants to know how. How do I witness? Doing wants steps to follow. Doing wants us to be led. He, Holy Spirit will lead me to speak to somebody. No, he leads me into all truth. Jesus said, speak to everybody. Why am I waiting to be led? To speak to somebody. Every single person my life crosses with that is unsaved is a person that, is, that I'm led to. Every single person. Doing needs us to be stirred up. Need to be stirred up to be a witness. Just Jesus. Just a lover. Jesus said, be my witnesses. Let's get out of this place of the doing. Because when I'm being, when I'm possessed by him, every person, if I'm in a restaurant, I want to make eye contact with the person who's blessing me with their service. I want to make eye contact with, with them. Who knows? What door will be opened through that? A conversation, an encouragement. I heard of this family, and they've got young children, and he wanted to teach his children how to be prophetically minded and to be witnesses. And they, whenever, every Friday night, they would go out for a meal, they would all have their little pens and notepads, and after the waitress would take their order, they would have to write something about her that they would want to share. 
And then once she's given them their food and they're about to go home, they ask her if they can quickly share what they felt God would like to say to her. Man, can I have my kids back? (laughs) There are so many simple ways we can touch another person's life. Being a witness is living it. It's opening a door for another person to see truth, to see Jesus. Holy Spirit power wasn't so that I could be satisfied and filled. <laughs> because we do, we do have to keep being filled, but we filled to be witnesses. So then I started to think, so if I'm not a witness, because please understand that I'm not speaking from a place of I've waxed this. I've been walking with this challenge all the time in my heart. But if I truly am that witness... then the power of God is operating. If it isn't, do I truly have Holy Spirit? He's been given for a purpose. And we're just happy to receive most of the time. And we forget why he was given Three people, the third one is people who expect to be used. These are the risk takers. These are our Pauls, our Esthers, and our Daniels. Have you thought about what would have happened if Esther didn't make herself available? Risk takers position themselves to be used to change the world. Every time God moves out of heaven and performs a miracle on earth, it is because someone stepped out. I know exactly what God is doing in your life. All of you. I know exactly what he's doing. He's doing what you expect. No more and no less. You are the handbrake of what he does in your life. You determine what he's able to do in you, through you, and with you. Jesus said it like this to the blind men. According to your faith, it will be done unto you. According to your faith, it will be done. You get to choose what I do in your life. In closing, I want to go to 1 Corinthians 3, 2 to 3. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and only and behaving only in a human way? I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you not ready. Milk is the word of God. So we've got is, we're on the milk. We all are in the word. We're reading it. 
And I'm back to what I started off with. You know neither the scriptures nor my power. We're on the milk. We're in the word. But what is the food? Food is the word that we do. Paul's saying, you still have the flesh. You still get offended. You still walk with unforgiveness. You're still arguing with each other. You are of the flesh. You are carnal. Paul says, I see in your actions you are not eating meat. You're not ready. You are soulish. We need to progress from the milk to meat. We need to start doing the word. In John 4.32, Jesus speaks and he says, but he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. In John 4.34, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will. So we're on the milk. We need to get to the will, to do the will. That is the food, is the doing. The food requires action. We want to be worthy of the call. We want to be disciples that cause firestorms. Disciples that are ready to give all for the sake of the gospel. Laying down our lives. Disciples burn with love. And Jesus answered them, you are wrong because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. If you know the scriptures and you obey him, you have progressed from the milk to the meat. You will have word. And you will have power. The Lord wants a church, wants a people that know his word and move in his power. Allow his word and his spirit to speak to you. So I'm in my heart, I'm saying, Lord, let your love flood over me. Just again, just again remind me. Let your love flood my heart. Let your living waters flow all around me that I can be swept away. I want to be swept away by you, Jesus. I want to be swept away. I don't want to hold on to anything. Allow me to see more than I am. Open my eyes. Open my ears. Soften my heart. We don't have much time. Mm. We do not have much time. Jesus, help us. Please, will you help us? We need you. I want to speak Jesus. I want to speak the better word. In Jesus' name.